Hello, I'm Mr. Marshall and welcome to the 7th grade lab. What I'd like to do today is show you a little bit about the drum and the spindle sander and how to properly use it. Um, before we get started though with any machines, we've got to make sure that we're dressed properly. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is probably get my sleeves rolled up. We want to make sure that we uh, have no loose clothing uh, hanging around that will get caught into one of the machines. The other thing is if I have long hair, I would tie that back up. I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Make sure I've got my closed toed shoes on and then I've asked permission if I can use this machine. The spindle or drum sander gets its name from the shape of the drum or the spindle. Let me open this guard up for you. So if you look underneath here, it's got a drum shape on the sanding head and that helps us when we want to do inside radiuses. So if we look here, this radius has an inside cut to it which will match the drum on the sander. The sander has many different sized drums. They're located around the back of the sander. Let me get a few of those out. So you can tell that there's different size drums. This one obviously would not work really well on this piece of wood because the radius on the two of them doesn't match. If I go a little bit bigger, I'm getting a little bit closer to matching the radius, but the one that's in the machine already is the closest match to this piece. Let me show you how to change the drum on that. To change out the drum on the sander, you need to make sure the machine is powered off and unplugged. And then I'm going to reach down in the front of the machine here. I've got a bunch of different collar sizes that are sitting down here, um, depending on what size drum I put, put, uh, put on there. It also has different size washers down here. So it all depends on what drum I put on, what washers, and what collars that I put on there. So the thread on the top of this is actually reverse. Normally we say righty tighty lefty loosey. In this particular case, I'm going to go right to loosen it. So I'm going to spin this right. I'm going to loosen up the bolt right here on the top. I'm going to set that down on the machine. Notice that this has a washer on the top. And then the drum slides up and out of the machine. On the bottom, there's also a washer. I'm going to leave that washer down on there. And then there's a ring or a collar plate there, depending on what size drum we put on it. Again, it's called a drum because of the shape of the sander. It's shaped like a drum. If I want to put a smaller drum on there, I'm going to slide that onto the centerpiece. I'm going to find the appropriate size washer down here, which one fits on top of the drum but doesn't come outside the edge. I'm then going to put the bolt back on. Remember that it is opposite thread, so if I want to tighten this up, I'm actually going left with it. I'm going to snug that down. And then I've got to find the appropriate size ring that fits over the drum. This one's too small, obviously. So I'm coming down here, I'm checking them out, and I want to make sure I get one that just fits over that my fingers can't get down in between. My fingers aren't going to be that close to the drum anyways, but that's the proper one for it. Then I'm going to clean the table off, put everything away, so all my washers go back down here, all my collars go back down here, and get the drums put back away in the back of the machine since I've got the appropriate size drum on. And then I'm going to adjust my safety guard down. At this point, we've got the proper size drum on for the piece of wood that we want to sand. I've now got to adjust the guard to the proper height. The guard adjustment knob is located over here. Um, I would take my left hand and hold the cage. I'm going to take my right hand, loosen up okay, the guard. I'm going to slide it down okay, until the guard covers the top okay, section of the drum. This guard is to protect you from getting anything caught in it, such as long hair, if you forgot to take something off, had something loose hanging down. Um, it protects the top. <clears throat> when I turn this machine on, it's going to oscillate, which means it's going to go up and down as well as spin around. So let me plug the machine back in at this point. And I'm going to turn the machine on so you can see that the action that it creates. Okay, you can see that the machine now is spinning up and down and it is oscillating. If we slow it down or turn it off, we'll notice that the machine is spinning 
in a clockwise direction. So I want to make sure that I engage my piece of wood so that it's going against the way in which it's spinning. If I went the way that it was spinning, it would tend to want to take that piece of wood and push it out of my hand. I'm going to take my piece of wood, I'm going to set it down onto the table, keeping my fingers three inches away from all moving parts like we do on all machines in the shop. I'm going to turn the machine on, and I'm going to engage it with the piece of sandpaper, and I'm going to move it opposite the direction in which it's spinning. I would continue that for a couple more passes until the inside piece of my cut or the inside radius was to my liking. When I am done with the spindle sander, uh, sometimes we call it the drum sander too, I am going to lower the guard back down. So I'm going to, with my left hand, I'm going to grab the cage. With my right hand, I'm going to loosen it up. I'm going to slide it back down. And we're all set. If you've got any questions at any time while you're getting ready to use this machine, don't be afraid to raise your hand. Ask myself or Mr. Revolino for a little bit of help. This is a great tool uh, that we can use in the shop. And again, it is designed to do only inside radiuses. It won't do straight lines and it won't do outside radiuses.